this and we're recording let me uh, bring in uh, the uh, panel here there's the panel hi 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 everybody how are you are you there we're all here they're all there ready to go let me see here and are we recording yeah we're recording recording. one last thing we have to do we want to go out over the internet with our audio and uh, this is believe it or not a little show that josh is going to do josh is to the right of me and uh, he's going to do it he can take it over for the next hour and uh, if you want to call it's a nice, uh, it's a much more intelligent hour than I do. Okay. Yeah, so better. let me just, uh, I'm going to kill my, my video and the just rest. Just hand of, over the uh, hosting. Oh, oh codes. yes, I should do that. So I can I? let people on. Yes. Right. Let me see here. Mike uh, Gallon is waiting to come on. Let me see here. Oh, where where, where oh. do I go? Oh, uh, here we go. Make co-host. No. Let's see here. I'll, I'll make co-host. Where which? He used to call. He used to be on this show. Where do I make yeah. uh, the? He was told he couldn't get on this Wait, show. I'm trying so. to look for. Where do yeah. I get on Jack? So I don't know. I'm trying. Don't know what to, oh, make co-host. There it is. Okay. I just want to get everything right. I don't know. What and happened. I will see you guys later. And the Josh now has control over it. And Josh, the hour is all yours okay all right all i think right. yeah it looks like i've got it yep co-host me so all right we're all set you mm-hmm. can uh take a break and we'll uh get going got a couple people here thanks to you guys that stuck around if you have to go or anything i understand you know don't feel pressure to uh stick around but as many people uh want to be here are welcome kevin will be right back we've got patrick we've got uh you know we've met our quota for handicapped people tonight um, so we're good to go there. Alan's here. Brian Neary's here. We're ready to go. There's a, so anybody can call, talk about anything you want. You guys can talk about anything you want. If you have something, you can bring it up. I mean, I have a couple things, you know, there's a, there is news every day. Um, no, I was just going to start with something that I don't know was talked about much last week on, on, uh, on the shows, but, uh, I thought about it a little bit. Um, I, I actually kind of missed it, you know, the, the first day or two, and then I wasn't around. But uh, I talked to Patrick about it and Kevin a little bit briefly. And that is the fact that, you know, I always say, you know, um, for a long time now on these shows, there's always a lot of argument, sometimes pretty heated, which I understand because these are big issues, about certain issues in our country that we really haven't been able to solve um on our own they end up going back and forth in lawsuits and legal challenges and whatnot they eventually make their way to you know our high court our supreme court that court comes out with its ruling and inevitably many people are very upset with it and i have made the point many times that the court you know they didn't ask to be asked to do this. We asked them to settle our differences for us. There are somewhere in the area, I don't can't remember, of a, a little over 300 million people in this country. If I remember right, I want to say 320, 330, something like that. That's a heck of a lot of people who often go to a panel of nine and then ask them to decide what we all would consider our most major issues of the day right um and the one that i'm talking about is is you know uh gay marriage homosexual marriage interracial marriage whatever terms you want to use to describe it um is a major issue that has gone back and forth for you know decades um and you know what happened last week was our our congress passed some federal law that protects those things so my point in all that is, finally, instead of having a ton of legal challenges making their way to the court and then everyone having a fit about it afterwards on both sides, because that's always how it's going to go, right? Our Congress, the representatives of the people that we elected, therefore the people in our Republican system, you know, pass some federal law that says, you know, these marriages are now federally protected. It is the law. And, you know, the important part here now is the Supreme Court can't do anything about it. 
you know, it, it, it is constitutionally allowed. It is not outside of their powers to do. So that means that, you know, this law is, it's, it's going to be here to stay now. Um, something like that is going to be, you know, near impossible to ever, you know, have overturned, as we've seen. So this is a good thing, if you ask me. It's not just a good thing if you are an advocate for gay marriage or interracial marriage. I don't necessarily make that comment in that, even though I am perfectly in favor of those things. My comment isn't meant that way. My comment is meant because it is a good thing that the people finally had their representatives settle the issue in their favor. That's what I've said before is the Supreme Court said this, and then everyone says, oh, but there's all these polls that say 68% of the people say this, and how could they do it? And I've always said, if seven out of 10 people really feel that way, then why can't the representatives of the people pass a law that reflects that overwhelming will that I keep hearing about. Why? Well, they finally have. And that, to me, is an important step. It's going to possibly end up the same way eventually with the abortion issue, okay? Right? Instead of our court settling it in a way that will never satisfy anyone, our Congress needs to settle it. They were, they were designed, they were set up, they were empowered with the ability and the charge, the mandate to exercise their law-making powers. And when they don't do it, that's our fault. And then because we get tired of them not doing it, we go ask the courts to do it. And that's not the way that it is supposed to be. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that the Congress of the United States passed the law, that they sent this law to the executive branch, that the executive branch signed it, and that it's the law now. And, and you know, no one can really do that. And I, I get that some people could say the law was not perfect or whatever, and it didn't say that every state has to allow it, et cetera, et cetera. I get it. But at least it does say it can't be taken away from you anywhere. If you live in Ohio, and Ohio says, no, two men cannot get married, but Pennsylvania does, and you drive right over here across the border and Pennsylvania marries you, you can come back to Ohio, and Ohio has to recognize that you are married. They don't have to marry you in Ohio, but once you move here and you were married somewhere else through interstate commerce through this law, they have to recognize it. You have all the same rights that you would have somewhere else. You can leave things to your husband, to your wife, to your whatever you want to call it, in your will. The, the law protects you in ways now that it didn't before. Uh, uh, custody, uh, you know, all these things that go along with marriage. You know, the same way with, you know, interracial marriage, uh, you know, things like that. I mean, stuff that was never going to get overturned anyway. But you, you kept hearing these, you know, rumors and this nervousness and well, Clarence Thomas's. Well, they just stuck a fork in him, didn't they? I mean, he's out of the equation now, is he not? And, and, it, and I'm sure he's fine with that. I mean, you know, the issue was, you know, it was put to bed finally. And it was put to bed by the people's representatives like it's supposed to be. So I don't know. Has anyone got any, you know, anything they'd like to say about that? I mean... If you feel differently, you know, by all means. But I have a feeling that most of you probably don't because most people probably see it the way that I should, which is, you know, our Congress should be taking care of this. Stop asking the court to do it and then writing your editorials. That, oh, John Roberts, he can't control this court. You know, I mean, you want him to fix all of America's problems? and satisfy you at the same time come on you know that's uh, a, a bit much to ask of anybody you know well patrick's shaking his head i'm sure he has something to say about it it, it i'm i'm just glad that that passed to shut the fuck up yeah. people that bitch yeah. constantly that you know it, you know the court didn't rule right or this one that or, you know, it, it's like you've said many times, contact your, your representatives. 
You know, if you want something bad enough, don't bitch about the nine people on the court. All they're doing is they're following the Constitution. Whether you like the way that they interpreted it or not doesn't matter. They are not elected. You know, I mean, that's tough shit. Your representative that you, if you're not lazy and you go vote for them, vote for the people that are closest to what you believe in. And then if they're not quite where you want, you got a fucking phone, you got a computer to send emails, you you know, I mean, contact them. And you Don't don't whine, don't talk about how the Republic just about ready to fall because gay marriage didn't this or, or this, you know, fucking thing didn't this. Well, here we are. Yeah, you do have a you do have a phone, you do have an email, you do have a pen, you do have whatever. But more important, you have a vote. I mean, you have a say in whether or not this law came to be or not. I know some of you are cynical and you don't feel like you had a say or whatever, but you did. I'm sorry, but you did. You know, now some of you didn't exercise it. Maybe not anybody on this panel, and maybe not anybody sure. out there. Although they're, I'm sure there's probably people that listen to this, this, this this network that didn't vote um so then if you didn't then i'm sorry then we made laws for you you know I mean, maybe the old I'll, west wing I'll, line is uh you know the old jed bartlett line is decisions are made by people who show up and yeah, maybe it'll, you know yeah. when you start seeing stuff like that maybe maybe it'll take more more people will take voting seriously on other people and yeah. items because a lot of people you know vote they they know who they want for president maybe and maybe governor or mayor or something like that but then you know they sort of skip through everything else and you know if we start seeing more of this you know what, what do you think has changed us because like my grandmother was an author she she used to if she's very she used to uh write a lot of politicians and and you know back in the day i mean obviously no internet or anything but you know she used to write politicians all the time and really express her views and yes. i think before it was like that and there was this change and now sort of with this maybe or like you say maybe with abortion that's also gonna maybe go through this way and well, what do you think has changed or needs to keep changing to have this happen well i think maybe what might have changed from let's say the 1940s or whatever if that was run your grandmother's era you know to to today for example is i think then versus now the 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 electorate or just the nation at large was far more informed Mm -hmm. on these issues because there weren't as many options for them entertainment wise. I mean, you know, they read the newspaper, Mm -hmm. they listened to the radio after dinner that night. Um, You know, uh, and and it wasn't clear full of, you know, entertainment type stuff. It was a lot of news and talk Mm -hmm. and things. I just think they were more informed. Mm -hmm. They weren't, they weren't constantly watching YouTube videos and, you know, Grey's Anatomy and basketball. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Look, a law has blessed us with football four nights a week now, and I'll watch them all four. You know? <laughs> but I also inform myself. So that's other people's fault. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I think that might have been what has sort of changed historically. is just that people through um, – entertaining themselves have moved further away from informing themselves mm-hmm. um, you know i mean you know look it's an easy pickings but i'm just telling you that there are a lot of people way more than i think any of us would probably realize who probably have no idea this law even passed mm-hmm. but could tell you like everything that the kardashians did last week or something stupid like that i mean yeah. but, you know but, uh, you know <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Who's who's dating who? And yeah. that's uh, Kevin was gonna add. Yeah, the, the thing that's interesting about what you said is 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 absolutely true because I was involved in a uh, we had a local uh, candidate here call for a recount, and uh, it was the first recount in our county since 1988, <laughs> and <laughs> it was really kind of a worthless recount but we we did it and i was one of uh say two four six eight people and we had to manually sift through all the districts 
um, and manually pick out, you know, just to get to these these particular candidates and and pick them out, we had to manually go through all the measures and go through all the other cards, ballots of the yeah. whole county, pick out all the measures, cards, pick out all the district cards. And then, you know, there was a process that we had to follow by law and they, we, yeah. they had, another person had to check us and they checked me and they checked, you know, we checked each other and that whole thing. But as I went through ballots, and of course, I'm just flipping through them, but you could see a lot of the ballots. There was a lot of empty spaces in the ballots. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. they wrote in Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck or whatever in, in these ballots. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm going, why do you waste the time if you're mm. just going to vote for one or two things on the ballot? There was so many empty cards or someone would just scribble on the card or put an X in every one of them except one candidate, you know, for the governor or, you know, and I go, why, why do these people do this? And I watched a lot of, uh, when I work the polls, um, I run a voting center and I go, I have to take, carry the ballots at the end of the night on voting day down to the county and I bring them to the place to where they get counted and the whole bit. And I watched the adjudication process, and I probably talked about this before. And the adjudication process is where the machine doesn't see the particular ballot. And when right. it gets run through the machine, it kicks it out, and that it will, you know, it won't see the bubble, the little dot. And it'll say, this is no good. And it goes to a manual table, and then they go through those. And it sits, and then there's four people that sit at computers, and they have to decide whether that's an X or they, you know, crossed out one and went to another one. But it's all done on a on a big screen, and people can watch this, and they display the the ballots. Yeah. And it's the same thing, yeah. you know, people waste their time to go there and and you know write Donald Trump for the local mayor. Yeah. Well, you know, whatever, all these different things. And a lot of them were just, you know, they would, they would just not vote for things. Yeah. And, or, or just turn in a blank ballot or vote for one item on the whole ballot because they didn't know what was going on. And I guess, you know, that's their right to do that, but right. You know, but it, but it, it, but it proves that people are not informed like yeah. you're saying. Yeah, so the democracy is not as healthy as it could be. It is not as vibrant as it should be. And it is not, um, it, you know, it's not up to par. It's up to expectation. It is not up to the level that, you know, for all some of these people, you know, all oh, the founders, the founders, you how dare you talk bad of them or whatever? Well, how dare you disrespect them by not participating properly and vigilantly in the system that they created for you? You know, I mean, the idea that an issue such as gay marriage, okay, would be solved by the Supreme Court, I am telling you, would be an affront to the men who wrote the Constitution. I mean, you know, like, that is a major issue of the day. One of the top top three or four, right? I mean, in the room, if someone had have said, well, how about we let the court decide on whatever their number one issue of the day was? You know, people, they, I mean, they would have been aghast. You know, I mean, it was no way. It's, that's, it's, that's not, that's no, you know. It's the people that are walking around with we the people on their T-shirts that Correct. want the Supreme Court to decide this crap. Which yeah, is so, totally yeah. obnoxious. Correct. I mean, they, like that's what I'm saying is they would have seen that as obnoxious and as ridiculous. We the people you know? means we the people, not we the right. Supreme Court. Yeah. So I mean, this was a good step, you know, in the right yeah. direction. I mean, Brian was asking, you know, like what needs to continue to change or whatever. What needs to keep going is Congress needs to keep doing their job. Okay. This is yeah. their. This is their. This is Bill Belichick. Do your fucking job. You know, I mean, this is their responsibility. 
but it is our responsibility to force them to do it and to vote for people who are interested in doing this, making a law that solved a problem rather than yapping about the election from three years ago or or voter fraud or all nonsense stuff, you know? I mean, uh, crazy, you know? I mean, people like Marjorie Taylor Greene are not going to help solve these kinds of problems. They're just not, you know? And there are mouthpieces on the left, too, okay? They're not helping us. Stop electing those people and elect people who are interested in being a legislator, a lawmaker, a representative of the people, serving on a committee to hold real hearings to get real information, you know, not committees to go look into this crazy stuff that they keep, you know, that stuff's ridiculous. I mean, you know, I've checked C-SPAN out a lot and I've caught four or five hearings in the past year where high ranking representatives from the National Park Service, for example, are there before Congress testifying about the overcrowding issues in our national parks. You know, that's, it's dry and all that, but I found it interesting because I visit all the national parks and historic sites and they are overcrowded and they do need more money and they do, you know, that's important stuff, right? You know, that's, that's a law making um, process and it's happening and there's no games and, you know, there's no horse shit going on with that, you know? I mean, that's what those people need to be doing. So it's our responsibility to keep making those people do that work. You know? Yes. Bye bye. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Bad time. You know, so I mean it's it's our responsibility to make sure they keep doing that. And when they don't, get rid of them. You know? I mean that's that's uh that's what we should be doing. I mean, we should be making sure people like that don't get elected, you know? I mean, seriously, and all, and all, and I know, I mean, it's not just because I'm on the left, but I mean, I'm sure Patrick would probably even agree. I mean, what positive contribution is Marjorie Taylor Greene going to make to the United States of America? Really? I mean, overall, right? I mean, really? I mean, what is she as a lawmaker going to help contribute to make this country improved in any way shape or form you know and trust me there are people on the left that i look at and say the same thing you know like what what are they i mean they're just gonna about nonsense you know so that's what we have to do we have to keep making those people do their job you know or get rid of them correct right or get rid of them and get other people who will because that's the most important thing. I mean, I think that this, 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 the passage of this bill, you know, was landmark in my mind, not for what it did, you know, like I said, completely agree. Okay. I would have voted for, it. I would have been in favor of it. If someone else wants to call and say, I would never have voted for that bill. And here's what I'm fine with that. I, I'll take your opinion on that, you know, but I'm at least happy that the argument was had, that the debate was had, that the, the law was passed, that it was signed, and that's that's our new law. And I think most people in this country, when the laws are passed and it went through the right way, I think for the most part, we seem to accept it and deal with it, right? But when the court settles it, we seem to, well, it's not over. We'll get a new court, you know, or what? I mean, you know, it never stops, you know? Uh, I mean, and I'll let Patrick go here, but, and what I was going to say is, so if you don't like this law, okay, I get it. You're going to win some and lose some in this, in this big Republic, you know, a, a couple of us probably don't like some of these laissez faire fucking gun laws that are going on out there. Right. But those are the laws they got passed. So you got your guns. They got their gay marriage. That's, uh, that's the United States of America. Welcome to it. You know, Patrick. I, I think the people that bitch constantly about the Supreme Court, I think that shows a level of ignorance and immaturity on their part of what the United States is made up of and what the the process is to be a citizen of the United States, which is voting, not bitching. And I mean, bitching is a part of it, but if you're going to bitch, 
do what you can to fix what it is you don't like. And like you just got done saying, um, some people may not like the gay marriage thing. Some people may not like uh, gun laws, but guess mm -hmm. what? That's where we're at. Those and, are the laws. And if you want to change again, vote for people who will change them. Don't mm -hmm. just sit right. and whine about it. Yeah. And don't sit and protest outside Supreme Court justices' homes because you're that stupid that you don't know that you have a Congress that can change the laws that the Supreme Court cannot change. Once right. the laws are the laws, then the Supreme Court has to say, well, I may personally not like it as, as, uh, as a Supreme Court judge, but guess what? The law says this. Mm -hmm. And then people like me who get tired of listening to people bitch constantly get to mm -hmm. sit back <laughs> and enjoy this law that just passed. And then it can shut up all the people that, you know, at least for that issue. Mm -hmm. But then there'll be another issue. I got to listen to somebody whine and bitch and complain. And then I got to listen to you explain to them again, you can vote. Right. So, you know, it, if, you, if you don't like it here, fucking move. It's the same thing as what they said. <laughs> you know, if you don't love it, leave it. Well, I say the same thing. If, if you don't mm -hmm. like the way the country runs, get the fuck out and go to someplace else and be happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you know, but take your, take your citizenship seriously, you know. I mean, go vote for whoever. Go send money to candidates that you support. Write the letters, send the emails. Maybe instead of money to the candidates, maybe to organizations that support your calls and lobby. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. I mean, it's your vote. It's your money. You know, it's your beliefs. You're welcome to it. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> Call up and tell us that you would disagree with that or what. That's that's fine. I mean, you don't have to think that um, two men should be able to be married in this. That's a, you know, I think it's a little unreasonable, but it's perfectly legitimate to have that thought in your mind. You know, even though I think it's wrong and I can't understand it, I. I can understand how they are saying, I don't know how you can think it's right. I don't understand it. I mean, okay. But so then what we had to do as a country is we had to decide how we wanted to handle those opposing views and how we wanted to make it where everyone could live together. And it, it and the only real way that that should be done is through the people's representatives, through a large body, you know, not through a court system. I mean, so I'm just I'm just thankful that it didn't get settled once again in some ridiculous way like that. I mean, this is the best way to fix the abortion issue once and for all and, and stop worrying about the judges that get on the court and what's going to happen with the next one. And now it's this. And now just settle it. Just get the people's representatives to settle it and pass a federal law that says no state may do this, that and the other. This is legal. And remember that any any right or any law guaranteed to you by the federal government can never be taken away by your state. That's why it is important to push your federal legislature uh, legislators to to set up laws that are important to you because then that cannot be taken away from you by your state. It doesn't matter if they pass a law in Congress and, and the president of the United States signs it, you know, your, your super ultra left wing or right wing Oklahoma legislature can't take it away from you. They can't do it, you know? So you should be fighting the battles with the Congress, not with the courts, you know, and your angst and your anger or whatever should be aimed at the Congress, not at the courts. I'm sorry, but it is not John Roberts' fault that you didn't get what you wanted. And yes, I'm talking to you, Ruth Marcus, columnist for the Washington Post, and all the rest of you wine-ass fucking lefty people 
who writes your fucking columns all the time and you know John Roberts dance and John Roberts at shut up. You know, he's one person with a huge job that you made much larger and much more unreasonable because your representatives couldn't do their job. Make them do their job. You know, I mean, that's, I, so I'm just glad that it worked out, you know, like that. I mean, I, I think that's the only real way to settle the abortion issue. However, you might see it. I know how I would see it. If you have an opposing point, if you see it the other way, that's fine. We're going to have to see who wins out. That is the only real way to settle the gun issue. Right. You know, I mean, it just is. It's it's the only way that really works, and it's it's also the way that it's supposed to be done. Our system is actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, don't blame the people who wrote the instruction manual because you don't understand or don't use the instruction manual. I mean, it, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. I if mean, Josh, you, you think know, that, and also with, with all the advertisements and and you know social media now. I mean, you have you have all these ads coming out you know you listen to one ad for the same thing you know and, and it says one thing and the other one says the other thing and you say well yeah i agree with both of those you know <laughs> but but then when they start bashing then you say well yeah i i i agree they shouldn't be doing that and then you, the other one for yes or for no then you say the same thing you know, there's just so much information sometimes it's hard to dissect that but i think like what you're saying a little bit is you know track records the big thing you know track record is are the facts and so that's you know when you do have politicians that are going through the system and going through senators you know then you can really you can actually see what they've done you know yeah. and, and have a little proof but man sometimes it's hard to, to dissect everything that's coming through yeah i mean we have so many different you know carved out uh niche you know media outlets for you know what i'm saying that are just driven to make money off you and I, and I don't know why more people can't understand that i mean yeah you know that is what fox and M msnbc do you know they're set up to feed that beast in your mind of reassuring you that you're the one who's right and the other people are the ones who are wrong mm -hmm. you know when in really you, you know, you should just sort of be informing yourself, not through entities like that. I mean, it's okay if you want to watch them, but I'm just saying, maybe just think about what people say. You know, the abortion issue, for example, okay? What's, you know, so just sit down without the news, without Rachel Maddow, without any of those folks, you know, and just say, man, okay, what is an abortion to me? What do I think about it? And then maybe, you know, through... A, a website or something that's more like an encyclopedia or something kind of look into what what does the constitution say if anything about an issue like that and then what do i think about it and what do i think we should do and how does that kind of fit just try to learn a little bit you know and maybe try to do it in a more academic more library type way not fucking by watching fox or msnbc Right, right, exactly. I mean, they are not going to inform you. I'm sorry, but they're not. You know, I don't find them informative. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah, just I think, don't. I think just the average person sees so much of that stuff. You know, they watch a Survivor mm -hmm. or some watching anything, and then all these ads come on, especially around the voting time. That really? side discourages people or, you know, confuses yeah. people. Did you have something, Alan, or are you just waving it? You were back. No, no, I just finished an ice cream and I was off video. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, if you have something to throw in here on this, go right ahead. No, I'm. It's interesting. It's interesting. So I'm. I'm okay. I mean, it's just, you know, I'm just glad that we we settled an issue the right way. And, and you know what's what's odd about it is, you know, I didn't really hear that much about it. I mean, did right. you guys? No. No. Nope. I, I mean, it, it was just like, okay, we, you got a law, game marriage, everything good, that's okay. But I'm telling you, if the court had come out and made exactly what this decision said in a 5-4 opinion, it had been fucking nonstop for five, right? I'm serious. Yep. You know, go ahead, Alan. So can, can Congress made the law, Congress can undo the law, right? I mean, they can. 
but that's going to be it's going to be pretty difficult especially given the way that it did pass with bipartisan support which is the other element of it that we haven't really talked about right. this was not 5150 in the senate you know 221 to 217 in the house with everyone on the other side talking about all the sneaky shit that the other side did to get it through and they didn't buy they bypassed this committee and then they did this backwards upside down reconciliation attached it to a funding you know i mean there, it was just a it, they passed a law you know i mean like for the first time and who the fuck knows how long you know i <laughs> mean with possibly without anything you know, I don't know if they built like a conference center anywhere out of the. I don't even think they did any of that. You know, they didn't rename any post offices or any, maybe, maybe there's some of that stuff in there that I missed. OK, well, I, mean, I, I would almost uh, guarantee, Josh, if there was, the Republicans would have been yeah, talking right. about it. And and you're right. You, you don't hear about it. And, and I would say the Ooh. reason you don't hear about this bill at passed it because there's nothing to bitch about anymore. Yeah. So it's not yeah. somebody didn't bake the right cake, or it's not somebody right. protested in the wrong fucking park, right. or something like yeah. that. It it's it, yeah. it was just a straightforward done deal. So yeah. now that I can't. I don't have my grievance that I can air, and I don't have. <laughs> You know, I, I can't virtue signal to all of my friends that I'm I'm angst ridden about this. So Yeah, so right. And if so and if you live in Oklahoma and you're very upset now that two men can you know uh, move in next door and be they can't get married in Oklahoma maybe, but they can drive themselves to, you know, Missouri or whatever and can get married and they can come back and they can live next door to you and they can be married and they can uh, have all the protections of that financially and estate wise and all that. So I'll tell you what, they didn't get married in your state. You didn't have to marry them. You don't have to pay for anything. Shut up and mind your own business. And, this you, can out. and you know you what? Yeah, you, you, correct. And yeah. you know what? There's a decent chance that those two guys living next to you maybe don't like the fact that you're allowed to have a fucking arsenal in your basement. Okay. So you can both shut up. You know what I'm saying? They got what they wanted. You got what you wanted. So, yep. you know, that's how it works. <laughs> you know, I mean, that, that, I mean, that's what I'm saying is, you know, you're sitting over there and you're upset that these two guys living next to you are allowed to be married and all that. Yeah. And you're sitting over there with, you know, 350 AK-47s in your basement because you collect them or whatever. Okay, fine. You know. So get off their back and they should get off yours, you know, and if they don't think you should be able to do that, they can keep voting and all whatnot and all that. And like Patrick said, you know, if, if you think that Oklahoma has gone to shit and North Dakota is, you know, the new Mecca, then fucking move your ass up there. Go right ahead or change the laws where you live. Cause that's your home and you've lived there all your life and you shouldn't have to move. Okay. I'm down with that. You know, so fucking get to work. You know, but don't don't fucking, you know, get, you know, fucking butthurt because John Roberts wouldn't fix it for you because he doesn't see it your way. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, he didn't run for office. I, I'm I mean, actually glad that it was quiet. Right. I mean, that's the point, is it? No. Yeah. It was a solution to a problem. Yeah. And. Problem solved. Now everyone can move on to the next problem. If Congress would do their job like this, we wouldn't have to have Fox and MSNBC telling us what to think every night. Right. I mean, you know, but they have a vested interest in it because they're making a lot of money off of it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, even if you like what they say or even if you agree with them or whatever, you know, Joe and Mika are making a hell of a lot of money in their life getting on TV every morning and running down Donald Trump yep. after they helped build him up, yep. you know, I, I, I mean, the, the, you know, Sean Hannity makes a lot of money every night acting like, you know, the government's going to come get your guns or whatever. I mean, you know, it, it's, he's making a pretty nice living, 
you know, hell, they probably have more money than Trump. You know, so, I mean, you know, I mean, that's that's what I think about. It. I'm just glad that that there was progress on major issues of the day, you know, and, and that all this signaling and all this hint dropping and some of these Supreme Court opinions that were almost like baiting people to bring us these issues and, you know, we'll take care of them for you. You know, this cryptic messaging or whatever. I'm glad that it was cut right off there at the pass, right? You know, yep. Congress said, mm, no, that's our power, not yours. Okay. Enumerated to us. It says so right here. Okay. This does Article 1, Section, blah, 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 blah. Oh, you guys finally figured that out? After all this time, you guys figured out you had the power to make fucking laws? Fucking congratulations. You, know, you didn't know you could make any, you could do anything. You, we could do anything we want. I mean, it's like they just figured it out, you know? I mean, uh, it, I think it's all for the people. The, the voters. I, I, I think people are still astounded or, and I like to say stupid, yeah. that they don't realize that they're the ones that really influence, you know, and, uh, I mean, right. and if that's why I say, and I know there's some people on the network that disagree, but I feel if you don't vote, don't bitch. Period. Yeah. I mean, you know, know that's a fair, you know. Well, it's the only opinion I have. I mean, you know, I I get some people feel differently, but I know that not not voting is your, you know, form of protest or whatever. I mean, fair fair enough. Right. Thoughts on both sides. I mean, I I get, you know, I, I suppose I happen to probably feel the more the way that you do is. You know, the Jed Bartlett decisions are made by those who show up and you didn't show right. up. And yeah. then when you finally got here, you didn't like the way we planned your party. Fuck you. Right. You know? exactly. <laughs> well, and, and that's the thing is, I, I won't even really entertain the opinion of somebody who doesn't vote. Yeah. Because well, me, right. I, I mean, if, if, if you didn't care enough, well then, uh, like like you said, then if you didn't like what we planned for you or, or what we did, and you weren't here, well, what do you want? I mean, you know, that's life comes with responsibility, you know. And if you don't want it, okay. I mean, you have that right in this country. That's the nice thing about it. Yeah. But you know, it, it's it's there are limitations you know, to your freedoms in this country. And if you'd like for those limitations to be lessened, you have to ask for it to be done. And you have to put forth effort to have that made, you know. Everything that you just think in your mind can't come to pass just because you want it and you thought it. It has to be borne out through action. You know, so I'm pleased that, you know, Congress, um, took these steps to exercise the powers that were given to him. I mean, you know, it's good that we were able to spend, you know, basically 45 minutes talking about it in a constructive way, you know, because it's a good topic. I mean, to me, it was a big change, you know. I mean, I I think that, like I said, this is the way that the gun issue needs to be fixed. This is the way that the abortion issue needs to be fixed, you know. This is the way anything else that you think is, is, you know, super big time right now. You know, this is the way that the border issue needs to be fixed. You know, there's other news today about this Title 42 had another ruling with another court that said this. And will the Supreme Court give a stay to this, you know, um, people awaiting uh, coming in here for citizenship asylum must, you know, the, the remain in Mexico policy while you wait and all that, you know, that people keep going in circles about and the Biden administration says this and the Trump said that remove the the back and forth politics from this by settling this with some laws, right? Because right now it's all tied up in the courts. But Congress doesn't have to wait for the court to make these, you know. They could slap together what they want to do about it tonight and mark it up and get it passed and get it signed ASAP. You know, they're just choosing not to at the moment. So, because and this is, you know, where I'm still a little disappointed. Why? Because they like kicking that around, you know. 
because Kevin McCarthy likes to go down there and point at the border fence and say, see, I'm doing something about it, you know, and Kamala Harris isn't. And, you know, they, they want to be able to hammer each other with it. I mean, there is an element to this that they're not as interested in fixing problems because not fixing problems remains them as pro- keeps them as problems, which means they can keep arguing about it and telling you how they would fix it and raising money and getting elected. You know, that's there. But I happen to think that perhaps <clears throat> this gay marriage law, um, et cetera, was somewhat born out of the fact that in this election cycle, the people chose not to give a super majority to anybody, you know, uh, right? That our Congress was is relatively balanced. Very small majority in the House, very small majority in the Senate. Sure. Opposite sides of the spectrum. President, you know, in his own little realm there. I mean, you know, what happens with these waves every two years or whatever, when we picked up 65 seats, is Congress seems to get it in their head that they're, oh, well, we're here now to do that, to do their party's own extreme agenda on both sides. You know, I mean, Republicans picked up 60 seats and they think that they're, you know, on this big agenda now to slash taxes. And, you know, I mean, whatever it is to the extreme right. And if Democrats picked up, you know, 70 seats or whatever, they think they've been put in there just for, x y or z that is only really important to their you know extreme end of their party or whatever and it 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 tends to move more in these big legislative things right at the beginning of a congress and then nothing gets done again for the next you know 18 months you know it's like you get it in the first six months because you're going around claiming how you got this mandate and you shove things through and then it's gone You know, this has to do with the fact, in my opinion, that it was a lame duck Congress. Okay, so some of these folks were on their way out anyway. They finally did the right thing. But I do think that it was sort of signed off on by the people when they chose not to give either party a a big change, you know, and it was lame duck. And now no one has to get elected for a couple to two years. And. So they were finally able to say, you know, we need to we need to do some work here. We need to make some laws. You know, we need to satisfy. We need to rectify some problems, um, you know, or we're all going to get thrown on our butts maybe or whatever. So, I mean, maybe I'm wrong there. I don't know. I mean, I'm not really a political analyst or anything, but I uh, just as a person, as a voter, I happen to think, you know, maybe that was a sign to them that, you uh, Hey, you folks don't really understand us as much as you think you do, you know? So, I, I don't know. I mean, that's that's kind of interesting. So, I mean, that, that at least wraps that up. I mean, um, I don't know, you know, maybe Kevin or, or whoever does, uh, does anyone have any, you know, interest in the fact that Elon Musk now is suddenly suspending people from Twitter that he doesn't like? <laughs> you know, I mean, I I, I go think, ahead, Alan. Yeah, I think he's going to move headquarters to Texas. Yeah. <clears throat> or Twitter. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, I don't know, but I'm, that's just my possibly. Thought. Yeah, I suppose either way. But I, 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 I mean, now I see story today about you know now he's banning someone from Twitter, a journalist or something like. Whatever happened to this? Banned, uh, no matter what, a CNN journalist, yeah, for uh, posting his uh, whereabouts on online, and apparently the guy didn't do it. Mm. I mean, even if he did, I thought you, I thought he wanted you to be able to type whatever you could fit in 180 characters or whatever, what? right? What? I mean, fuck I, Elon I, Musk over and over and over and over and over again. Yep. All caps or whatever. I thought he was supposed to be down with that. He's uh, talking uh, two sides of his ass. Right. I mean, did I not understand? First, I mean, I, am I wrong? That's what I'm asking. Did I not understand? Because no, that's what I thought he said. Well, you know, but freedom to speak, suddenly, and then now all of a sudden it's not freedom to speak. Right. Didn't you lay off all those people and then regret it and start asking people back too? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, seems like seems like he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, and the quote unquote committee told him about it. So. Yeah. Right. What committee? Yeah. Yeah, so I agree with what Alex says sometimes is yeah, why why is he dealing with Twitter, man? He he has 
you know, money to do these different things and at least see what would fly with, you know, with, with other items. I hear now there's like a van that they're trying to do and there's a, even a smaller model, the Model 2 that they're trying to do. So it's like, man, you know, get some of that stuff going yeah. instead of, instead of why Twitter? Yeah, yeah. Why I mean, forty-four billion. You could have come up with an electric McLaren. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 it's almost just like how he's acting. You know, it's almost like he's had enough of people talking shit about him. So yeah. what do you do? Buy the company and then fire everybody, right? Well, buy the company and then kick people off Twitter. And it's like, the, what happens with the next Twitter? And like you guys are saying, you know, the NFTs will be expired. You can't even do see them or anything. Yeah, when's the next yeah. one? The thing that we've talked about is is if this guy's this wacky with shit like that, what, you know, this guy's dealing with our government. We need yeah. to deal with secrets yeah. of our government. Yeah. How wacky is he going to get with that shit? Yeah. He's already yeah, right. government, uh, on a couple of things already with Starlink and everything else. Yeah, right. And it's, it's going mean, to happen sooner or later down the road. That's my problem with this guy is when he just made cars or solar panels or whatever, I, I don't really care because that's whatever. But when our government decided to make him, you know, our main uh, conduit to space and a major defense contractor, I'm not really into that. Uh, I, I think he's a, a child, if you ask me, uh, you know. Um, you know, he's a spoiled fucking brat. Uh, I mean, what Elon Musk needs is a, a fucking good slap across the face. You know, a lot of billionaires are like him, though. Think right? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, the, so have, I mean, uh, I don't have a trust for the guy. I mean, look, if people like him, Alex is a fan of his for the most part. I think that's fine. I mean, you know, it, it's he can be your friend and not mine. There, there's no law against that. I just find it interesting, you know, that I see a headline and I have to admit I didn't have time to really read into it so maybe there's something there I don't get but you know I mean just the general headline of Elon Musk suspending people from Twitter is enough for me to say what that I thought that was the whole big the big thing you know was he he, he didn't you know think that or whatever but suddenly it affected him personally and it was well I own this I can do whatever I want Okay. Yeah. okay, you whiny little fucker, you know, go ahead. You know, I haven't used it since he bought it, so I don't fucking care. And yeah, when but, you have an owner like that who's down to that degree of the business, I mean, that's, you know, you're supposed to have people <clears throat> to have guidelines on what is good and what is bad and and have people in, in those positions that are making those calls. And to yeah. be that that in the weeds to say, oh wow, I want this guy off. I want this guy off. Now I, you are acting like a kid. Well, I'm taking my ball and I'm not letting that guy play. You know? Yeah. So. I mean, that's uh, yeah, <clears throat> right. Yeah. I I just, you know, I know we've talked about a little bit on the side, and I've said before, you know, as creepy as this guy is, and as mentally unstable as he seems to be. If we're going to use him as a defense contractor in the way that we do um, and trust him to, like I said, if you, what, two months ago or whatever, launched the most highly classified, the most high-tech spy satellites that our nation has ever built into space, which any idiot knows is to spy on the Russians and the Chinese, mm -hmm. and you're trusting that guy for that? I mean, you know, okay, fine. But... uh uh, I think I would be keeping an eye on him all yep. the time. Yeah. I mean, because he's not, you know, he's not, not trustworthy, in my opinion. Not stable. It, it's, but, but, you know, you see the interview. Was that 60 Minutes or something that they just did an interview with him like a couple months ago? And when he's showing about SpaceX, you know, he, he's very, you know, great ideas and great stuff that he's done that, that side. It's this whole other side that's just... Right says why 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 you spend all your money and do that stuff so. yeah i don't i don't care for it yeah. you know i i don't like the space part um and this is not a personal one here i i just you know i think patrick and i are on the same page with this i think it's a crying shame and it, it makes me sad that our government no longer can do that i mean nasa should still was once the pride of this and still should have been 
We never should have allowed that to slip through, you know, our hands and go to a private contractor and and all that. You know that I mean that this country accomplished such enormous feats, you know, through that and then just squandered it all and let it go in the name of, you know, money or stupidity. It's it's uh, so I would feel that way if someone that I thought was the greatest man that ever lived was running a private space program. I'm just not in favor of private space programs doing our government work. I mean, look, if you have the ability to build a rocket ship and with your own money and fly it to fucking Venus and whatever, I mean, you know, it's you know, whatever, but you know, our, I just think it's sad that NASA was allowed to, be, you know, yeah, and it's not, and it's not Elon Musk, right? I mean, it's his money. So it's not him that's coming up with all these solutions to the problems about bringing the rocket up and bringing it back down. So if these guys were working for NASA, they would be doing the same stuff, but they just, you know, NASA. I agree. Correct. I don't think that, you know, the, the, that the, the design came straight out of his brain. As you said, it was a whole hell of a lot of people who worked there that he hired and he paid. So that's fair. But I agree with you that I think that NASA should have hired those people and paid them exactly. to do it. And they yep. should have had the money to pay a competitive wage that those people would have worked there. Exactly. That they wouldn't have said, well, no, I can go over there and make five times as much. No, we should have paid them to do that. It should have been working there. We should have done it. I don't care what it costs. Yeah. Yeah. Did John Kennedy stand at that podium and say, we're going to put a man on the moon and return him safely to the Earth? As long as it costs less than five million. You know, or what? No. He just said, that's what we're going to do. Right. But, I mean, I get that we can't, you know, spend $9 trillion or whatever, you know. But I don't, I don't care what it costs. I really don't. And I, and I don't, I've never liked the argument of, well, all that money you spent on space, you could have uh, bought box lunches for a million fucking homeless people or whatever. I'm sorry, but we can do that too. Okay, I happen to personally believe that. Yeah. But it's been proven over and over and over again that exploration, period, in this case, space in particular, has always and always will yield uh, results that change the world and better everything. And yeah. you don't even know what they're going to be. You know, yeah. some of them you're looking for, but you, you, you find shit tons of others that you weren't looking for, you know, I mean, yeah. that just come about because of the export. It's just the right thing to do in my opinion. But even if you didn't think that the historical record has proven that it bears fruit, mm -hmm. you know, that it, that all if you just plant the seed, even if you don't know where it's going or where it ends or whatever, if you just plant the seed and you just do the work, if you just cultivate and fertilize, if you do the work, it bears fruit. Yep. You know, I mean, there's no doubt. And it, and I think that it's sad that a private company, especially one run by a fucking dipshit, is the one harvesting the crop. If you want to keep it on that right, and not us the people the government you know what i'm saying i mean you know i mean to me if it were nasa this would be our pride i think you know but it's not our i don't feel it's it as it's as american as it should be because it's not it's not our government the half the people working for him are uh, you're gonna call up and call me a racist do whatever the fuck you i don't care he's a fucking american you know i mean i mean i just I, I don't care for that element of it. So, yeah. Uh, and yeah. like you said, that, you know, going to the, going to the moon, you know, like you're saying, it, it's not just about going to the moon back then, but it was getting how we get up into that atmosphere. And then that just launches everything from satellites, from everything else. So going, right. doing one thing really, really yeah. you know, expanded and brought in the, this whole other level of right. stuff. So, yeah. I mean, our, the modern world that we live in, you could make a decent argument is one long chain of events from John Kennedy at a podium saying we choose to do this, that, and the other thing, you know, I'm it's just, it's, it's true, you know, so, but yeah, good stuff. Yeah. So you've been talking about the uh, going to the moon. Yeah, a little bit. I brought yeah. up Elon Musk suddenly wanting to ban people from Twitter that he doesn't like anymore. Well, you know, I think, I, I think the problem with, <laughs> I, I saw in an interview with somebody who said he, he spent some time with uh, Elon Musk and was amazed at how incredibly intelligent the man was. 
and um, and how well, how scientific he was. And I and I thought about it, and I said, you know, why is he wasting his time yeah. with this piffle called Twitter? I mean, if Twitter is never going to do anything to change this world, but the other two things he's doing are helping. Yeah. You know, I I I want to I want to like the guy, but he's doing everything lately to make me dis find him disgusting. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, like making electric uh, cars. What? Like making electric cars. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's a good idea. I think we I could. Like, I like my good old gasoline burning, <laughs> and that's the way I want it. Yeah, but, well. <laughs> I think hey, we only live once. Might as well burn. You're gas. gonna fucking kill me. Yeah, yeah it keeps yeah. coal in the trunk. Yeah, well, he gets coal in his sock too this time of year for that kind. Of, no, I I yeah. just think that uh, I agree with you if you say something's better than the electric car. I mean, they they there are people who are talking about creating solar panels on cars yeah. uh, and uh, having uh, the uh, uh, having an electric car, but the electric car is powered by other sources as well. And yeah. even just the motion of the car will cause, right. you know. So it, 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 there's, there's better stuff that's going to come along. But he started the move away from gas, fossil fuels, which apparently you like because you love burning dinosaurs, you know. Right. <laughs> I'm with I like you, noise. Yeah. You well, only way to <clears throat> dinosaurs alive. Well, did you have fun? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, yeah. I think this was a better way of doing it. You know, yeah, it's fine. All yeah, the it way works around. fine. Yeah, good show. Yeah, good show. Yeah, yeah. 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 Certainly, far more. Hopefully, interesting. people, uh, people listen. Yeah, it's a good balance. You know, Alex's show, and then you know, Josh. We learn a lot of stuff in Josh's stuff. So yeah, you Alex don't you don't learn shit from me. <laughs> My show is just a uh, procession of <laughs> morons. Okay, so but yeah. You know. <laughs> Hey, listen, uh, thank you, Josh. Why don't you say yeah, goodbye sure. to everybody, and we'll sign this whole thing off, you know? See you all later. Okay. Have a good weekend. All right. All right. Okay. Bye. See you later. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.